Saw two day. What's happening, guys? But Sunday morning. I gotta kind of make this one as quick as possible. We got called in already, so let's get right to it. Um, been busy at, in the shop most of this week. Um, I'm really trying to push hard. Um, buddy T Mac um, is gonna do some heat treat for me. Kind of had a date preset to kind of get everything up to or over to him so he can heat treat it at a certain time. They kind of got it all worked out with him and a, a buddy where he works at a heat treat, heat treat facility. So I've been spending a lot of time, uh, late nights and whatnot. Uh, so the first thing I did was I showed you last week, I was, I was going to talk about a video and so I recorded a little bit as I went on, on this one. It's not done yet. I don't have the detent all the way dialed the way I want it to, but you will see in the video from where it's at. Uh, and I'll splice that in when I'm done with this in, kind of intro thing, but the detent's not horrible, but this is on bearing now. And I go through the process with you on that one. Um, so in that video, you can kind of sort of see me struggling putting this um, thing together at once and I had to take it back apart and put it back together. Well, what I kind of found out was <clears throat> the mill is having problems holding tolerances. I've had problems with that mill since I've got it and it's just getting worse and worse. So I'm trying to dial in what's going on. But at this point, basically, I'm going to take the mill completely apart and put it all back together, figure out what's wrong with it and try to rebuild it. So like it's going to be a process. So like I can use it to limp along or I could put that time and effort into that CNC and get it running and buying tooling for it. So I'm kind of at a crossroads. I gotta kind of figure out what's going on, especially from a next like major projects. Having said that, um, uh, this is the Sharif collab knife, which at this point, pretty much like I've, I, I've, I've destroyed his drawing so much that I'm just gonna call it like Sharif inspired design. How about that? Because it's not really, all he is collaborating. He is still helping me figure out stuff, but like none of this that I've done is what he wanted or even suggested a lot of one. So well, anyhow, uh, last week, you know, I just showed you, I had the stop pin, the close and the open, that still works. Um, this closed position is gonna have to change uh, because when I did the lock bar cutout, <clears throat> now this is all done with a 1 16th end mill, all this. So uh, for those that don't know, that's an itty bitty tool and manually you can barely feel it. And then if you have mill problems like mine, uh, there's a couple of issues. One, the spindle has run out. So as you're sitting here looking at a tool instead of like a drill press, you know, they start doing this. You see old drill presses, and that's more or less what this one's doing on a much smaller basis, but that's more or less what it's doing. And then you have dials that you can sort of change positions with. They have backlash in them. Um, and that's normal for a manual mill, but not to the extent of what mine is. Like I can go almost a rev before my backlash is out. So there's a major problem going on one of my accesses. On top of that, the DRO is having issues, which is the digital readout, uh, which helps you digitally figure out where your position is. So you can see on this top cut right here, how I went past where I wanted to go. Basically because I was doing this, and I, I got done one night and I left, left the DRO, DRO on, came back the next day, went to the exact same positions, uh, and I'm using a 1 16th end mill and it has to be super tight so that when you look under here, you can only see a gap of about maybe three eighths of an inch. So you can't really see, it's under a spindle that's super big. You have to flashlight it and kind of look under it. I went past the position I wanted to go to because I, I trusted the DRO and the DRO was wrong. So it's one of those things I kind of knew there was always an issue, but this right here is proving it. But uh, anyway, you can see a lot bar cutouts done on the inside. Um, and it's this funky design right here. Uh, I normally would have never done it this way, but I did it this way basically to save this knife. Uh, it's the only way I could figure out how to make the lock bar engage the blade. You can kind of see the blades not cut underneath it, but you can see this, there's meat. If you look in this little slot, you can see there's meat of the blade. It's basically the only part, let me see if I can close it up. I'll just close it so I can see. There's no other piece, and you can also see in here where I relieved it, you can see the washers. So there's a lot of mistakes made on this one. So. I'm gonna get done with this one just to get one under my belt But the main thing I was kind of alluding to is I, I want to get this done for heat treat So I got a few more things to get done with this one So I can get sent to TMAC, which I believe is this week. I got to send that stuff or maybe it's next week I can't remember. Uh, I have to look at the date um, So most of my time has been spent working on the um, Sharif one this week um, uh, Let's see other news my Degman is about to get start building. So if you follow Dario or Derak Steel, um, this is a Degman as well. I got this one from Sean, but I had custom ordered one before I even got this one. Uh, this one just came in for a trade. He wanted a knife that I had and I wanted this one. So we kind of worked out a trade. <clears throat> and also what finally came in is the Proof Strike. So Steve got the, uh, 
uh, most people I've seen. I guess, I guess Steve's probably the only video I've seen. He got the, well, I think they call it Praetorian, but it's, it's a Tonto. Uh, and I got the, I don't know, was he called this dagger? That's what I would call it, spear point dagger. I don't know, whatever they call it. Um, and I'm not an OTF guy, and my wife liked it right away, so I got her to sit down for half a second. So you'll hear Hot Rod's opinion right here. All right, so if you watch the channel for a long time, Hot Rod has an occasional cameo here and there. But we got this Medford Pro Strike, and pretty much, it's, <laughs> can you close it? <laughs> pretty much right away she claimed it. So I figured we'd get her to give her thoughts. Obviously, the button's a little hard for her on the close. Go from there. Hmm. What do you think? Um, I really like it. Um, I think it feels very nice uh, in the hand. It's quality made. It's like heavy except not really heavy i can barely feel it in my pocket um but it doesn't it feels like it's quality made um it doesn't like i don't know jingle or jangle or whatever you call it when well, we've only had like make, what make noise two other ots like what was it we had the, we had the ultra tech and the combat throw it on so this is like our third otf so me personally i'm not a huge otf fan like i don't know why i even ordered it but hot rod likes it let me see for a second half a second so for normal use, I can do this left-handed all day long. So it's just slightly still breaking in or whatnot. Um, as far as the actual, can you push it out for half a second and just hold it up to the camera. So pull it back towards you, just a hair towards you. That's good enough, all right. So the, as far as the actual grind on the blade, uh, if you look at it, you can still tell it's handmade. So versus the other ones that we've had, the Microtex we've had, they're super crispy lines and stuff. If you look, if you're, if you really angle about it, like this plunge grind is not the same as the other three and it kind of sort of come in and then bellow back out. But this is, that's sort of like a, a element that I like about it. Personally, it's, you see the handmadeness of the actual blade in it. Um, it's a little slower than the other OTFs that we've had and, and I've had experience with, not like dramatically, but a little bit slower. Um, but like she said, uh, it's, it's, it feels like it's a quality build versus like uh, some of the import stuff that we've seen. I've not had any experience with like Axial or any of those other newer ones. Um, and obviously the button's not as easy as it could be. <laughs> it's all good. <clears throat> all right, any more thoughts on it? Um, Do you remember you even ordering it? No. It's been like, it was since I think I November think you, of 22. Yeah, I think you basically told me a when few it was weeks, actually when he did the video showing. Oh, I, do you remember the, then? <laughs> okay. So it's it's been a long time coming. Uh, so I almost forgot about it. If it wasn't for Steve and me talking every now and then, I probably would have forgot about it. But I knew that Hot Rod would like it. So yeah, I guess we had another Medford to the collection. I was thinking I'd probably just get it and flip it, but she, she, as soon as she flung it out, she's like, nope, this is mine, so. It's good fidget, but I, I wish I had the strength to. Well, off camera, you could probably do it. Put your other hand up there, that's all right, there you go. Um, I'm just not strong enough, my, my thumb or whatever leverage is just not strong enough to bring it back but um i do like it all right there's our thoughts all right so y'all thank hot rod for sitting down with us for five seconds like i literally had a catcher between breakfast taking a shower and we gotta go here in a second so i got this 10 15 minutes still doing this intro exit thing and uh i'll edit it on the fly <clears throat> so now um uh, as i was i started to say it a minute ago the problem i had with this one when i was doing that video is the constant holding concentricity so if you have a hole and you're putting a catamore around it in other words a bearing pocket if it's slightly out of position and you're trying to hold that diameter real tight you have issues right and that's what the, this, it took me a minute to figure this out but i didn't put it in video or say that in video so i just wanted to be clear about what had happened was the concentricity between those two holes was slightly out which i was trying to hold everything super tight so i opened that pocket up to have room for that bearing to sit in there and have room to move a little bit everything worked out fine so that's to uh kingdom armory and like i said the detent's not done because i'm waiting on carbide um tools to do this to finish it it's not a horrible detent it's just light right they can, it, has some, it has some feel to it it's not like a feel it's just it's just light so uh when the carbide drills come here i'll try to finish this one and i got her other one to do that uh scorpion six i think i showed you last week all right, so uh, let's put that video right here. Okay, so this is a Kingdom Armory bomber. Uh, I believe it's to be a mid-tech, 
this came from Denise and if you can't read her notes she's asking for a stronger detent and to possibly put it on bearings so this seemed like a good project to kind of go over two things with you so on the detent part of it this is on phosphor bronze curve currently as she mentioned but I'm just going to show you that the closing part of it like you can barely I can't even discern when that detent kicks in and, and rolls it closed but if I let's see if I can find this right tool here so I'm just behind the camera so it's a little bit goofy I'm gonna back off that pivot just a little bit to give it like a little less friction let's see if we can tell see it sucking in there okay so I think part of this problem is because it's on the phosphor bronze the detent's not super strong it's not really sucking that detent back in right see how it does it now with a little less tension on it so if I put it on bearings it should act more like this so that's gonna help the detent a little bit so that's one aspect of it um, the other aspect and I've already had this apart so uh, we're just gonna look into it so this lock bar right here to the blade do I see any light or anything in between it like see there you go you can see it perfect right there you see how the detent ball is sitting on top of the blade but the, this lock bar is not touching the blade so the detent can go further in so we can increase the size of the hole in the blade in order to sink the detent in a little bit more hopefully you can see that with that white background right in here hopefully that makes sense that's a, I always shine light in and look at it like this an easy way to tell uh, if you're getting full contact <clears throat> um, or full engagement I guess of that detent ball uh, so let's pull this thing apart I've already had it apart and I've kind of sort of already scoped this out a little bit so I'm not like totally going in here blind but I'm gonna pull this apart and kind of show you why um, you can't just buy any bearing you want and stick any bearing you want in a knife to convert it you have to kind of sort of investigate what's already been there and um, the easiest way to go about doing it so um, you know going from phosphor bronze to a bearing you have to have a bearing pocket so it has to have something that to ride in because you get the bearing is a thicker part than the than the washer is if that makes sense hopefully that makes sense for what i'm saying here pull this apart there we go all right so just a backspace and everything on this so in case you're curious um so we got two things to kind of discuss here first of all so it's a 3 16 pivot this isn't a bruiser this is a kind of a fairly small knife so 3 16 to me is adequate for what we're doing here but we have two different size washers as you can see <clears throat> so the thicker side get, obviously gives it more bearing surface so when the lock bar is pushing against the blade it has more surface area you know so all that comes into play it's same with bearings like the bigger od bearings you get or the multi-row bearings the more stable it is but you can see this smaller diameter has to clear that lock bar and you can even see this little one is into this gap that in the cut here more than uh it's not not going to hurt the engagement but it's all the way into that so you have to have a bearing if you're putting a bearing in there you need a pocket that's going to be fully encapsulated really or should i don't know if you have to but uh it probably should be fully encapsulated so now the thought process is how thick is this titanium i'm gonna pull this pivot out of here how thick of this titanium could i mill a pocket in this to sink a bearing in it or should i mill the pocket into the blade and sink the um the bearing the distance the difference between the thicknesses should I should I pocket it the blade or the titanium so it's a choice right um, so every time you come across this you've got to kind of figure out what works best for the scenario you're doing right so if you look there are counter bores in this titanium so we're just gonna take a brief quick measurement here the total thickness of this thing is about 130 thou I'm gonna zero it this is just easy so I can show you this way. And then pocket, and this is not necessarily the most accurate, I'm just doing it so you can see it. Uh, bring it over here so you can see it. So I'm down in that pocket, uh, 95 thou. So what's the difference between 130 and 95? That's the only, that's the thickness in here, the meat for where that actual pivot's holding. But if I go kill, mill a pocket in there, <laughs> especially for like 062 bearing, uh, or, or 1 16th bearing you're talking about 40 thou there's not gonna be any meat left in there to hold the pivot right this just it's gonna be too thin inside that um, and I'm sorry I saw, I told you that backwards so 130 thou was the thickness and I went to 95 so that's 45 thou for this counterbore so whatever the difference of that is I, I did the math backwards sorry excuse me <clears throat> either way there's not a ton of thickness in this counterbore so if I pocketed this titanium my titanium is getting thinner. Obviously steel is harder than titanium and you get stability, but this pivot, this whole blade is pivoting on the, 
or spinning on the pivot. So it, it, things to consider, right? Um, so in this particular case, I want the thinnest bearing I have so I can remove the least amount of material I can around this. But having said that, it also has to be an OD that is smaller or as small as that washer, right? Does that make sense to you guys? Hopefully it does. Hopefully I'm not just talking out my ass and you guys don't understand what I'm saying. So let me zero these calipers again. So basically it's, it's, three, it's a three eighths of an inch OD on this washer. Um, it kind of doesn't matter because in bearings, you know, you use the same from both sides. Um, so what I've already selected, I had it in stock here, but uh, a 3 16 bearing. You can see that the ID is, uh, if you can read this, 189, which is basically a thou and a half oversized. Uh, the OD is 300 thou, so I'm 75 thou in where I need to be. Um, the one millimeter balls, the washer itself is, is 30 thou, but the ball itself is one millimeter, so that's basically 39 thou. Let's call it 40 for argument's sake. <clears throat> Our current washer, this should be roughly 20 thou. Yeah, so 20 thou for the current washer. So I only need to go in, pocketed in 20 thou to make these bearings work. Hope this makes sense. So could I pocket the titanium and make it 20 thou, you know, less thickness and make it work? Sure. Um, no matter what I do, as soon as I pocket it for this, these washers are not gonna work on this knife again. So this is a permanent modification. It's not a reversible one. Unless someone made a one millimeter conversion for that bearing to fit into it. So I think what I'm going to try to do uh, for simplicity's sake is just do it on the uh, the blade. So I'm basically going to put, put in a 20 thou, 20 thou deep. I'm going to go a little oversized, so probably like a 5 16 so 315 thou, 312, actually what it, 312 five, uh, to make uh, the OD and then the bearings, these bearings should sit right in here. So let me break these bearings out and I just kind of sort of place them in position and hope you guys will get the gist of what I'm trying to do. The other thing that I kind of sort of wanted to consider in this particular um, conversion and in general just discuss at least is the option of um, a hardened steel, basically a, a you know a, a thrust washer or you know a, a washer that kind of seats the bearing or bearing race. So this is more or less what I'm aiming for right here. So I'm gonna push the lock bar down so it sits on the on the pivot a little more. But this is more or less, sorry if I'm off camera. Uh, this is more or less what I'm going for. Uh, you can see that this OD is way smaller than what the bearing was, or what the uh, phosphor bronze washer was. But you can also see, I'm gonna take the pull this back off so you can see that this bearing fits without getting into that um, slot here at all. So the bearing can completely spin, right? That's kind of the goal here. Uh, and I don't want to, I could have probably went with a bigger OD. I don't know that that um, Skiffs makes them or somebody else does that. It could have been bigger, but it could, the pocket part would have went out into the block bar cutout. But then you're kind of sort of exposing all the junk in here to get into that pivot, right? Does that make sense? Because you have an open hole there. And basically, even especially when it's locked, you have pretty much access to for materials to get in there. So that's kind of sort of my thought process of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, back to the hardened washer as I was saying um, you know a lot of people especially the Chinese uh, manufacturers for the most part do everything on the hardened washer it makes sense to do it that way uh, from my point of view on this particular one I'm just gonna let it ride on the titanium I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference um, but it could in theory longevity it's kind of like lock bar insert versus not lock bar insert you can obviously see that he's not running a lock bar insert on this one so it's the same kind of theory there. Like, will you wear out the titanium? Titanium work hardens as it's as the bearing goes through there, so it'll actually harden itself and make it harder to, uh, you know, dimple or something like that. And I've, I have a ton of knives that run on the bearing runs on the titanium, and I've never had an issue with it. So well, we're gonna let this one ride that way to make it simpler. And I don't have a source for those hardened washers. I don't have a surface grinder to make them. I could turn it up in the lathe. I couldn't heat treat it, but you know, you could get them heat treated or something. Uh, preheat treat and then cut them and then grind them and make it make your own but I need to find a source for those washers but for this particular one especially it not being really um, designed as a hard use I never did measure blade and show you this thickness either so this blade is basically 155 thou so cutting 20 thou and 20 thou so subtract 40 from that still gonna leave 100 basically 115 thou thick 
at the bearing. So I think that'll be fine for this particular knife. Thought processes. Uh, I am gonna go out to the mill and try to cut these pockets and try to come back and show you the pockets. And hopefully all this will make sense and you understand my thought process behind it all and it all works, but we're about to find out. All right, back with you now. So pockets are cut. So you can see what I was doing there, trying to cut that pocket. Um, pretty important to keep this parallel so basically when you put your bearings in there I'm just gonna throw them in here real quick get bear with me one second okay let's see if this makes sense to you um, if I can get this bearing cooperate with me here okay so damn it sound bearings are in it uh, sorry I can't show you better than what I am and I, it's probably not gonna come out in video good but I'm gonna try it anyhow we're shooting for that 195, so we're at 194.5, so five tenths off. And the how I'm judging this is the back spacer should be perpendicular to that whole spacing, right? So 195.5, so we're like one thou out. So pretty damn close to parallel. So that's why the depth of those uh, pockets matters so much with the bearings and stuff. So uh, this is the first test fit, so I figured I'd take you along. The other thing I did too is I did check this ball to make sure the ball was good. The ball looks great. It's a ceramic ball. I did add more uh, lock bar tension, so before the lock bar wasn't completely up, out like that was. So it's a trial and error type thing. This is dry fit, and I'm not going to put any lube or anything on it. This is just a, a try and see, and I lost the pivot. I can't see behind the damn camera. Oh, sorry about this cluster of the video here. Uh, I'm not the best at articulating or showing what I'm articulating, I'm trying to articulate with words. Uh, and it's super hard to do this behind the camera. I don't know how those guys do those breakdowns and shit with the camera in their face. Or maybe they just got better set up than I do. But either way, I'm trying to do the best I can here for you guys. And I'm hoping that I don't have to do any of the detent work. I could go back and make the hole slightly bigger in the blade like I was talking about earlier to let the deep detent ball sit in there more but I'm hoping because of the how I described it before the, the little bit of less friction how it sucking that detent in I'm hoping that's going to be the um, the fix for this we'll see you here in a second I guess um, for those curious it's t15 pivot t10 body hardware um, overall quality of this knife I'd say pretty damn good the, the make of it was you know like Okay, so we're pretty much spinning at this point, so looks like it might be slightly off. Yeah, detent still sucks, so I gotta go do detent work. Let me just back off this pivot just a hair. Let's see if I made it over tighten it. I mean, it's dry, but it feels like it should be smoother than that. So maybe I got some trash in the bearings or something. Yeah, because it's not, it's not really like. It's not even locking up like I want it to now. There it goes. Nope. There it is. All right, so we got something else going on. Let's just stop this. So obviously that was a clusterfuck. I can't assemble behind the camera and do everything and check everything I need to do, but one of the bearings got kind of twisted and turned on there, so there's no way you can really see it at this point, but blade centering looks pretty good. Let's just show you the detent. So it's not a super strong detent, but sucks it in right bearing action like you want it now pretty much same lockup as when I started hopefully you can see all that so I think this one's pretty good it's not the best detent like it could be stronger on a detent but uh, I think I'm gonna call it there and then she uh, wants this detent a little stronger than this which I'll show her the video here in a second and see all right summing this one all up uh appreciate y'all being patient with me you know doing these quicker videos hopefully what i had done earlier this week's enough entertainment for you guys uh you know middle of summer dog days of summer right so everybody we, we all crunch for time or hot bothered everything else so i appreciate y'all riding with me uh what else i was like yeah i just wanted to get the equipment up to my standards and then maybe we'll proceed with some better quality stuff like i'm i'm not i'm not completely unsatisfied with what happened here but you know at the same time like i 
I know I could do better if the machine did what I told it to do. No excuses, just is what it is, right? All right. So y'all have a great week. We'll catch you next week. Later.